迎收看《奥赛访谈》，我是克鲁斯。今天我们节目有幸邀请到了前联邦贸易部长 Andrew Rob 先生接受我们的采访。澳大利亚联邦前贸易部长安德鲁·罗布毕业于经济系，曾在七十年代担任过农业经济学家，九十年代步入政坛。二零零四年十月，当选进入联邦众议院，曾就任移民及多元文化副部长。二零一三年，他被任命为贸易与投资部长。在二零一六年大选前，他宣布退休。他同时写过一本名为《黑狗发呆：公众生活私人恶魔》的书。克鲁斯与罗布前部长的专访就从他的退休说起。Joining us today, we have Mr. Andrew Rob, former Federal Minister for Trade and Investment. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you for being with us here today. You've recently retired and moved、mm. on, so we've、um, we know that you've written your book in 2011.、Uh, what are your plans for the future now that you've retired? You've got more time to yourself, I would hope.、Um, yeah, your, your book. Having read the book, it's quite a personal account of. Your own battle with depression and、um, your life throughout politics and through your career, which is it's something that we don't often see. So, are you planning on writing any more books, or <laughs> will you just relax and take it easy now? No, I, I won't relax. Well, <laughs> I, I hope I'll have more time. I mean, if you're a senior minister, every minute of every day is、mm. programmed, really. So,、um, I enjoyed it. And、uh, I was blessed with lots of great opportunities in、mm. politics,、um, but in many ways I want to see the architecture of the free trade agreements that we've put in place,、yeah. and I've played a big part in over the last few years in the region. I want to see them used.、Mm. So I'm in the process now of setting up my own small business, where I will seek to help companies from Australia to trade and invest into the region. Including, obviously, and probably principally China in the、mm. first place,、uh, but also companies from the region、mm. to help them to trade, invest into Australia. And I do feel often you can have all the trade agreements, but there's always cultural differences.、Mm. There can be misunderstandings.、Um, there can be regulations that are not understood、mm. by different parties on both sides.、Um, there's all sorts of issues where just a little bit of Common sense and、um, facilitation can help what should be a good deal、mm. uh, um, become a good deal, right, and, and not fall over. So、um, I really want to play a part with a lot of the companies and others that I have met, both、uh, across the region, including very much in China,、mm. and and my knowledge of the Australian business community and、uh, many sections of it.、Um, I want to try and. You know, see what I can do to help some big deals. Northern Australia, the tropics, which has been very much underdeveloped,、um, I, I want to play a part in that facilitation role. But I want where there's projects that can help develop the north in a significant way.、Uh, I'll be particularly interested in, in helping there. But also、um, at a personal level, I, I want to try and do some things to、um, promote the need for people to confront. Mental health problems、mm-hmm. if they've got them, and not to feel、um, put off by the stigma that's often been associated with mental health problems.、Um, I had a 43 years where I told no one and didn't even want to admit to myself about my、uh, my difficulty、uh, with、uh, depression. And but when I finally confronted it, you know, I've had now had the best. Six years I've had since I was 12 years of age. So,、um, and I've been highly productive, and I've been able to go back and assume significant responsibility. And I want to encourage lots of people who have got a depressive condition, not just in Australia, but in many parts of the region, to be honest. So I'm looking for、um, not a paid position. I'm looking for a,、um, opportunities where I can contribute to be a strong advocate for people confronting their problems. And getting professional help, and、um, then if not curing it, managing it so that they can have the best possible life that they can. With the upcoming 2016 federal election, what areas of Australian business do you see likely to be affected by any changes or any big rumbles? Well,、uh, firstly, I, I hope that、um, the current government, of course, 
is, is uh, re-elected because I think the business community as well as the rest of the community are looking for a period of stability. Mm. And um, Malcolm Turnbull, uh, he's well liked across the community. Um, he's only been six months as mm. Prime Minister. He seemed to be a man of um, considerable business experience mm. um, and public life experience. Um, so I, I do feel that uh, a priority is to have a return of the government so we see this stability. Secondly, if the current government does get returned, um, it will mean for business, um, one, some more stability, which is certainty is very important in business. Um, so that is important and I think that will continue. Secondly, though, there will be a strong emphasis on um, small and medium businesses mm. with tax relief, accelerated depreciation. Um, now, 50% of our economy and many of our services are um, run by small or medium-sized businesses up to $250 million uh, revenue. And um, they will get accelerated depreciation. They will get uh, cuts in corporate tax rates. Uh, and that will be a great confidence lifter and that will help um, the competitive position of many of those. It'll help them put on more workers, so it will help grow the economy. Um, and I do think from the big business point of view, uh, there's lots of things, but the principal thing will be if this government returns, we will be able to pass legislation which reinstates, puts back in place, um, the Building and Construction Commission, which uh, for the purposes of your, your audience, um, it's really putting a, a policeman on the beat, mm. on the, especially with the construction industry, which uh, a lot of the union activities have been um, uh, inappropriate, in many cases unlawful, criminal. It's an area of our economy and our business sector which needs to be uh, far better um, regulated and policed. Do you think that the Brexit, the whole British exit from the EU, do you think that's going to make waves here or will it will we be relatively okay if there's any change? Well, something like that, um, I think it'll be of more concern to the European community yeah. and how does it encourage other countries to leave or not. The, for Australia, there would be opportunities as, yeah. as well as I'm sure there'll be some downsides. It's hard to really assess it. It's such a complex um, set of a series of things that would, that would happen. But, um, we, you know, we've been locked out of trade in certain areas for, with Britain since they joined the European community some decades ago. So, I mean, if I was still the, the Trade and Investment Minister and, um, and in England, the UK leaves the com common market, mm. Uh, I'd be there with my ears pinned back trying to, <laughs> to do some sort of deal to uh, open up access to the UK that we lost some decades ago. 2014年年底至2015年底 同年12月20日,澳中自贸协议也付诸实施。这位成功结束十年澳中总长自贸谈判的工程,被称为是澳中自贸之父的就是安德鲁罗布前部长。your many years of experience and as the former Federal Minister for Trade and Investment, how have you viewed the relationship between China and Australia as it's developed and where do you see it going in the future? Well, I think the conclusion of the Free Trade Agreement took the relationship to another level altogether. Um, of course, we've got, uh, out of our 24 million Australians, we have one million of those who speak Mandarin in their home. And so we've got a million Australian citizens who um, are an important part of the fabric of the relationship because many of them are involved in parts of the supply chain or helping investors from China to make sensible investments. Um, but also we're now starting to see uh, a much more uh, 
comprehensive relationship. Uh, of course, China's our biggest trading partner and China's seventh biggest trade. We are seventh, the seventh biggest trading partner. But I do think the free trade agreement um, has given uh, even more endorsement, if you like, of the relationship. The, and relationships are about trust. So I think there's growing trust from an investment and from a trading point of view, but also the relationship. I think um, Australians do find that they relate easily and positively towards members of the Chinese community and the work ethic of the Chinese, um, the intellect, um, the family orientation, all of these things um, are valued in Australia and I think it's all helped to endorse the relationship and take it to another level and I can only see that improving frankly, um, as our two nations. We've got very complementary uh, strengths. Uh, what China can bring here um, is valuable and what we can take to China is valuable. So I'm very positive about the future. Good. Um, so in terms of Chinese investment, as, as you mentioned, we are very, very closely related in our investment uh, partnership. Mm. We know that China is one of the largest contributors to Australia's investment market and that we are one of the top destinations for Chinese investment. Um, what areas do you feel that Chinese investors should look to focus on in Australia and where is this investment from them chiefly needed here? How can it help develop our relationship between Australia and China? Well, ever since European settlement over 200 years ago, uh, Australia has relied on foreign investment from all sorts, all sorts of countries to help us realise the opportunities that are here. Uh, we're the 12th biggest economy, we're the 6th biggest land mass, but we're only the 51st biggest population size. So we've never been able to... Um, properly fund from a small population the the range, the wide range of opportunities that exist in Australia. So we've always relied on foreign investment. Chinese investment has been something that has emerged in the last decade or so um, to complement many sources of investment from elsewhere in the world. Uh, I think what is important is to have that investment uh, looking for opportunities within the things that Australia is is good at, things that Australia has a comparative advantage. Resources and energy, very important opportunities, uh, not just in the production but the supply chain. Um, agriculture and agribusiness, again, in production but not just production, in the supply chain, um, in international education, uh, anything to do with health. Uh, great strengths of Australia and tourism. Now those five areas uh, and the services that cluster around those services and the high-end manufacturing that cluster around those services, that's where I think Chinese investment should largely be uh, focused in addition to things like housing and whatever but um, and construction. But investment in those areas helps keep Australia not only strong in those areas, but keeps us highly competitive. Innovation, right, uh, growth in those areas. If we can continue to grow and innovate in the things we're good at, um, then um, we'll stay competitive and there'll be good returns for investors into those areas. So where do you feel that the highest growth potential lies? What industries do you see the most potential in? Well, the five that I've mentioned, resource and energy, agriculture and agribusiness, um, international education, health in all its dimensions, hospitals, nursing, pharmaceutics, par paramedics, um, uh, medical devices, all the sorts of issue um, areas around health and tourism. Tourism and health, I think, are the fastest growing ones. Agriculture will be, I think, a major strength for years to come because of our clean, green, healthy produce. Resources and energy just finished a boom, but there's a lot of uh, opportunities now um, with uh, the possibility of, of buying some very good assets in the resources and energy space and developing those further in, in 
anticipation of the next time that prices lift. So I do feel uh, they're, they're the areas that we should see the Chinese focus on. Okay. Um, in terms of Chinese investment and investors, what benefits do you feel are the most prominent for those interested in investing in Australia? What can Australian investment bring for Chinese investors? Well, the... Uh, in, in Australia, a lot of the investment, we have got large amounts of um, capital in our superannuation or pension funds, right? Uh, nearly $3 trillion. But there are lots of funds and none of them have really got large scale. And they, they're reluctant to invest in longer term propositions. They're looking for more shorter term returns. Um, now that'll change in the years and decades ahead, mm -hmm. but at the moment that's, that is a problem with the nature of capital in Australia. So there's a great opportunity for Chinese investors who've got a longer term perspective mm -hmm. to come in and um, take equity positions in a lot of um, highly promising or proven areas, but they need to be, you need more capital and more capital to keep those areas of strength in Australia, maintaining the strength and being able to compete on world markets. And in many cases in the services area, I think across dozens of different service operations, um, health services, education services, financial services, engineering services, architectural services, agricultural services, water management services, all these different areas, um, China has got the capacity to come in and uh, take a position, investment position, with um, some of those world-class services, and then uh, take that take that expertise back to China mm -hmm. and grow it um, in a very significant way. Because China is at a stage of its development where developing its services capability is very, very important. It's where the jobs are. Uh, the most jobs are in services and that's needed, jobs are needed in, uh, in China and if they can come in and invest in some of our world class services and take those either the joint venture or they, if they wholly own it, they can then um, use the intellectual property uh, back in China to uh, grow in a much bigger market than we've got in Australia. So it's a bit of that give and take kind of relationship and if you're in it for the long haul, it'll end up being really beneficial for you. Yeah, yes, well, I think there's an opportunity for China to come and um, um, be very much part from an investment point of view of the strengths that Australia has. Um, and in services, we've got world-class strengths. And to um, then help introduce those services uh, into China and the free trade agreement has made that even far more uh, easier and uh, in many senses we've got concessions that no other country has got yet from China. So there's a real time of opportunity and, uh, and first mover advantage. If companies both ways, Australian companies go to China and invest and Chinese companies come to Australia and invest, there are concessions both ways which make it very attractive at the moment. and. Um, and it doesn't face competition from many other areas of the world. 面对目前世界经济前景的不明朗、地缘政治、恐怖袭击以及欧美甚至中国经济的放缓，澳大利亚经济未来也被让人感到担忧。担任贸易部长多年、对澳中经贸关系了如指掌的安德鲁·罗布前部长，又如何看待澳大利亚经济的前景呢？他与澳财访谈主持人科鲁斯分享他的分析。How do you see Australia's foreign investment landscape developing in the future? Uh, I think it's um, uh, enormously exciting. What we're seeing in the region, in really in Australia's backyard, mm. which Asia is our back, it's our backyard. Um, we're seeing something that's never happened since European settlement in Australia, and that is the major drivers of global growth rather than being in Europe 12,000 miles away or in the United States 12,000 miles away, the, the, the action now, and I think it's going to continue all this century, mm -hmm. is in our own backyard. China's leading the charge, but you look at, uh, you know, 
um, Indonesia, you look at Vietnam, Malaysia, India, um, Korea, Japan, um, all of those, they're all contributing to now the Asian region being the principal driver of growth for the globe, right? I think um, China and India um, are heading back to inexorably to where they were for 18 of the last 20 centuries, and that is part of the centre of economic and political gravity in the globe. They're heading back to that position. They'll share it with the United States this century, in my view. All of that means that, that uh, the sorts of strengths that Australia has got, both in food production but in services and first world services and resources, all of these things complement what many of those countries in our backyard need. So I think if we um, make sure that we engage and the free trade agreements are part of that better and closer engagement. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can bring into the region and there's certainly a lot of opportunities that the region will provide for Australians. So uh, I do feel very positive about uh, not just the next 10 or 20 years but the rest of this century for the Asian region which includes of course Australia. So in terms of the China Free Trade Agreement, which we've already mentioned, um, now this has uh, a stipulation which allows uh, a certain numbers of temporary Chinese workers to be imported into Australia for these large-scale projects. Now, local labour market tests have apparently been removed and there is a high risk of the exploitation of these workers coming over here. How do you feel that Chinese investors for these large-scale um, projects can be held accountable for the rights of the workers that they are bringing into Australia? Well, that your statement is not quite accurate. Um, there is a provision within the agreement that uh, if there is a very large um, project mm. and they can't find at that time the um, workers that are necessary, there is a requirement to go and prove that you can't find the workers, right? It's not, um, in that instance, it, 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 we have not removed labour market testing requirements, so um, they have to prove that the, the, the workers they need are not available uh, with the skills that they need, but then once, if they do get on a, it's an enterprise by enterprise agreement, yeah. okay? It's not it's not across the business community. So it's enterprise by enterprise. If we want to get that project away, get it moving, uh, and there aren't workers in Australia, they can apply. Um, and if they get um, an allowance, if they are allowed to bring in uh, the number and, and with the appropriate skills, then they have to abide by all the Australian um, workplace relations laws, right? So that means the minimum wage, uh, it means the work safety conditions, all of the conditions that Australians have to meet. Now, we have authorities that monitor, monitor all companies yeah. that they are complying. So the Chinese companies would be no different, okay? So I think the free trade agreement, it does allow some flexibility yeah. in the existing migration arrangements, but it certainly protects it certainly protects the rights of Australian and any Chinese workers who might come in to help get that project away and, and uh, completed. Thank you. Thank you to our former Minister for Trade and Investment, Mr. Andrew Robb, for his time today. Thank you. 欢迎扫描屏幕上的二维码，关注我们的官方微信，及时收取最新节目动态。以上就是这周的奥采访谈，在下周同一时间不见不散，谢谢。